Hey guys, hi, I'm Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Today we have Ryan from Kinetic here to talk about the Kinetic Market Data Services for NinjaTrader. Uh, he's going to talk about how you can get started for free with Kinetic and NinjaTrader. He's going to talk about the CME Fee Waiver Program and how you can sign up for that. Uh, he wants to talk about the difference between unfiltered data and filtered data, which you might be getting from one of your broker feeds. Uh, he also wants to cover some uh, market metrics and market breadth indicators. Uh, there's about 500 of them with Kinetic. And uh, the 10 years of historical data that's available is going to mention that as well and then answer any questions that you guys have. As you have questions, just type them into the box. We'll do our best to get everyone's questions answered today. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to Ryan. Okay, Ryan, we see the PowerPoint full screen or Prezi. Perfect. So um, hopefully everyone can see that. I'd like to thank uh, Big Mike here for the opportunity to present uh, to his wonderful members the Kinetic Advantage here. Um, he gave you a good rundown of what we will be talking about. I'm going to quickly go through this presentation. That way what I can do is discuss how these features translate to their use uh, within NinjaTrader 7. Uh, the idea here is with the kinetic data you would connect uh, with a ninja trader and it's a supplementary feed for any brokerage data uh, a lot of people will use it as a replacement there as well uh, and the reason for that has to do with the fact that it's unfiltered data uh, there's an extensive amount of historical data and it covers a large amount of markets so we'll cover all of these features here and then we'll transition over to ninja trader where you can see all these features in action uh, within the application now one thing I do like to do is keep this presentation interactive. So any questions that you guys do have uh, throughout the course of the presentation, I would encourage you to just post those in the room. I look for natural breaks to go ahead and answer those. That way we don't get behind or anything like that. Um, if there's a question that maybe doesn't uh, correspond to what we're discussing, uh, go ahead and put it in the room, obviously, uh, and I will go ahead and answer that when I uh, get around to it. Uh, but I will, I will be able to answer all of those questions. So this is primarily for your benefit and uh, to get started in that in that sense um, what I'd like to kind of discuss here obviously is the things that we will be talking about uh, kind of mentioned it uh, the best thing from my perspective about the kinetic is is affordability uh, I would invite you to compare to any other data provider and what you get with those data providers and compare the cost that you would be paying uh, to kinetic and you'll see that the affordability of it is a tremendous value and I'll talk about that and one of the aspects of that value is the the fact that there is a free feed there uh, combine that with the fact that ninja trader itself is free to get started I uh, can't beat that obviously when it comes to getting started so uh, with that we'll go ahead and first thing I, I like to mention uh, just as a little bit of background is uh, obviously with the nature of trading now there's more reliance in terms of the technology and a couple of high profile examples uh, as it relates to data specifically is the exchanges and how they're communicating from one to another um, moving over here Back in 2010, there was a fiber optic cable uh, essentially that was laid from Chicago to New York, and they actually ended up tunneling through some mountains there uh, between those two cities as a way of cutting off a, uh, about 100 miles of travel. Uh, that way, rather than going around the mountains, they could just go through them. Uh, the result there is it ultimately saves three milliseconds in terms of transition uh, from one exchange to the other. And so when you look at the cost of what it would take to go from New York to Chicago laying that fiber optic and the ultimate savings in terms of the time, uh, what you're seeing is essentially a large amount of investment in terms of the technology uh, to finding new methods of being able to uh, essentially execute faster, get your data faster, and see if you can be one step ahead of you know whoever it is you're trading against. You know, whenever there's a buyer, there's also a seller, things of that nature. Uh, another high profile example actually relates to uh, a cable that's going from 
New York to LA. Um, I don't know how many of you are history buffs, but personally, uh, I remember in the the books they talked about laying a uh, telegraph from London to New York, and uh, you know, as being a, a milestone. And you're kind of seeing that development of of technology. And in this case, it's a fiber optic cable as well. But what they're doing is they're taking the most direct route uh, again from New York to London. Uh, the idea there is that it ultimately is going to save 5.2 milliseconds uh, in terms of transmission transmission time uh, from one level to the next. Uh, and the cost there was $300 million. So you're talking about uh, an extensive amount of investment in terms of uh, a very fractional difference uh, for that advantage. And um, with Kinetic, what we try and do, obviously we can't um, bring to you that sort of uh, industry type of investment to uh, provide at a retail level, but what we're trying to do is uh, make the game more fair uh, in terms of being able to provide you with the information that's going to ultimately provide you with the advantage uh, in terms of your own trading. And to that end, talking about the background of what we do with the Kinetic and uh, Kinetic servers is our servers are uh, centrally located within the United States right near the Chicago Exchange. And they're professionally managed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. And they're quad redundant. And when we're talking about redundant data servers, what that essentially means is you have multiple servers that are handling the same task. Uh, that way there's never any downtime with the Kinetic service. Uh, Any time that you wish to access the service, you can access the service. You see sometimes with brokerage feeds, they may have to reset uh, at the end of the day. Uh, that has to do with order execution that's also available with the brokers. Uh, but it does affect your ability to get the data. That's not an issue with Kinetic uh, ever in terms of the and the ability to connect because it's always going to be available to you uh, based on the redundancy of it. The other thing that allows us to do is it allows us to run server upgrades uh, without it affecting your trading or anything like that. And so we're constantly uh, tweaking our servers to make sure that they are more efficient and effective uh, in terms of providing you with the best technology uh, for your trading. The other thing that we've done is we've optimized it for Ninja Trader. Seven, and what that means is um, typically there's a what's known as a programming interface, short API, that functions as sort of like a translation device uh, between servers. Each different server technology has different methods of analyzing data uh, that comes in. Uh, an API is essentially a piece of software that takes data from one application, translates it so it's accessible within another application uh, by removing the uh, API that typically exists uh, if connecting and optimizing it for NinjaTrader 7, uh, what you're able to do is connect directly within the NinjaTrader application and that ultimately uh, helps in terms of getting the data uh, direct from the exchanges to the NinjaTrader 7 application um, in fractions of a second. And then moving now along here to the uh, next feed, uh, the thing about Kinetic as well is also the extensive amount of data that's available. And the extensive amount of data uh, ultimately extends to the futures market, and we're talking about all the major U.S. exchanges uh, such as the CME, the CBOT, the NYMEX, as well as the COMEX. Uh, I mentioned those specifically because they relate as well to the CME waiver program, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, each of those exchanges uh, and all of the exchanges themselves um, have costs uh, in addition to the, the basic service cost of Kinetic. We'll talk about the pricing uh, at the very end when I go over uh, how to go about subscribing, uh, things like that, and just getting generally started with it. But all of these exchanges have their own individual costs. Um, and the reason I mention those particular futures exchanges is because they are the ones that participate in the waiver the waiver program and ultimately you can save a large amount of money uh, by participating in that waiver program but there's also a large number of international exchanges there as well uh, you have the Eurex exchange which is really commonly used for like the FDAX or um, the euro bond and, and futures contracts like that and then there's also um, we recently added the Sydney futures exchange so you can trade like the SPI contract which is uh, gener is sort of like the ES contract and except it monitors the Australian uh, equities exchanges 
But then there's the NYSE lift uh, exchanges of things like the uh, FTSE 100 uh, future contract. And so essentially you have a large amount of futures data uh, available um, on a global scale here. And then uh, in terms of the futures data, but then there it also applies to the Forex data. And you're talking about uh, a, a large number of pairs. Uh, there, the ba there's two types of Forex packages that we offer depending on your, your needs as a trader. But um, the extent of data that's available with that is you're talking a large amount of currency pairs that are going to be available, over 100. Uh, and the other thing is with the 10-4 data, you also get Forex data that's ultimately going to be available from regional banks as well as composite symbols. Um, because of the decentralized nature of the Forex market, their different banks can have different quote rates uh, for the Forex pairs. Uh, with Kinetic, we offer you the opportunity to actually view what the various uh, different traders uh, markets in the Forex markets are, are offering uh, in terms of their various spreads um, just based on the nature of that. Um, otherwise, the the primary Forex package we offer is data from FXCM, um, one of the largest of, of Forex brokers that exist out there. But then uh, also equities data. Uh, with your equities data, um, that's going to include your major U.S. exchanges, the, the Amex exchange, um, which now I believe they renamed to the NYSE market exchange. But then there's also the uh, NYSE, the NASDAQ. Uh, there's also the Toronto stock exchange um, that's available to you. And so you can access those, those equities there as well uh, with the, with the uh, kinetic data. Now, in addition to that, what we offer with all of these are um, some indices, and I'll come back to those because uh, I will focus on the indices specifically. So there's four types of instrument classes uh, that are available with Kinetic. Uh, and the great thing about all of these instrument classes, regardless of whether you're viewing the futures, the forex, uh, or you just subscribe for the indices or the equities data, all of this data is truly unfiltered data. Um, with Kinetic and the unfiltered data, I just have a, an example here of a numeric sequence of unfiltered versus filtered. It's not necessarily important whether you use unfiltered versus filtered data. It's some, just something to be more aware of uh, because there are certain brokers that do actually filter their data. And what that consists of is rather than providing a true tick by tick measure of the market, uh, what you're seeing is a sub-second interval updates, say like uh, you receive what the broker would term as a tick, but in reality it's a, a every quarter second. So every single second would consist of four ticks based on a filtered data feed, whereas Kinetic, the ticks are generated when a trade occurs at the exchange. Uh, the result here what, and the reason this is important is, let's say you're doing back testing and you want to make sure that your results, uh, even though there can obviously be differences between back testing and actual performance, in any case, when you're back testing, using an unfiltered data feed is ultimately going to be more beneficial because it shows you the most granular view of what's going on at the market. Every single trade that was placed ultimately is going to be uh, represented, uh, in this case, within the NinjaTrader 7 application direct from the exchanges uh, because of the nature of how Kinetic provides you uh, with this unfiltered data. And just for comparison's sake, uh, what we have here is a filtered chart. Uh, I just want you to take a quick look at this and compare uh, the number of bars here. And you can actually uh, make out here on the bottom the time frame. And this actually consists of an entire trading day from 7.25, um, my local time is mountain time zone, so the market opens for me at 7.30, uh, and then it ends a little after 2 here. And what you see is the number of bars. This consists of the entire trading day. Moving down here, what we have is an unfiltered chart. And you see sort of the similar time frame starting at about 7.30. But this particular unfiltered chart only ends up going up to 12 o'clock for me locally. Uh, the reason for that is um, because we're viewing a tick chart in both of these cases, uh, what we're seeing is the unfiltered data generates a far larger number of tick-based bars. Uh, and that's ultimately because with unfiltered data, there are going to be more ticks. And so uh, even though going back, you can compare uh, the general trend here. And this is actually about to uh, this particular filtered chart 
here consists of about to right about where there's the large up bar and then that takes place over the final two hours of the day. Uh, when we see that, we see the general trend represented, uh, but again, the number of ticks ultimately does factor into uh, how indicators calculate and things like that. And so it can have a, a difference in terms of your trades and not necessarily something that you uh, may be concerned about, but it is something to be aware of at least with your trading. And it's one of the reasons that we've made ultimately the decision uh, with Kinetic to provide completely unfiltered data. Now the ability to provide this unfiltered data, and that kind of goes back to the, the reliability and the stability of the connection feed, uh, is dependent on our ability to support the, the infrastructure there. And that's why we invest so much in it, is so that when uh, there are heavy trading days, uh, there's nothing that ultimately is going to affect you uh, when you are seeing this large amount of data being generated uh, at that time. Now, uh, in addition to the uh, tick by tick data and the benefits uh, that come with unfiltered data, uh, there's an extensive amount of historical data. And for this extensive tick data, we offer 120 days. Uh, you compare that, again, I invite you to compare to other data providers that are available with NinjaTrader. And uh, you compare the amount of historical data that's available, and that's far more than the, that what you're going to get with other providers. You're talking about about uh, four months of historical tick data. So you can build range charts or volume charts or any tick-based chart uh, based on four months of historical data. Um, given the number of data points, that's a, an, an insanely large amount uh, of data. And um, to that end, just uh, one thing I want to uh, clarify is uh, we do, in during the trading day, we do actually uh, limit a little the amount of historical data that you can access. Uh, we typically reduce that to about uh, 10 days that's going to be available to you if you're loading data within the market hours. Uh, we do that so we don't have to... Um, change the bandwidth in terms of the real-time data uh, and overload our servers, but anytime outside of the market hours, uh, you can download that full 120 days. NinjaTrader caches the data for you, so there's never any, once you download it once, there shouldn't be any issues with that. So some of you may have run into that if you already are using Kinetic otherwise. Um, all of that historical data is going to be accessible to you. Now, we're also talking about two years worth of minute data, and the minute data is essentially used only for the minute-based charts within NinjaTrader, and this two years is actually just a baseline. For more commonly traded symbols, there's going to be more extensive data, and when looking at, say, the ES uh, recently, you can see there's about seven years worth of minute data. Uh, so if you're back testing, that amount of historical data uh, just gives you this vast resource of which to uh, apply any strategies that you may be testing. Uh, it can show you maybe indicators that you custom coded or anything like that, uh, how they would relate to historical trends uh, within the market and things like that. And then also the 10 years worth of daily data. And this is daily data that's going to be used for your weekly, your monthly, your longer term charts. Uh, it uses basically the open, the high, and the low, and the settlement price uh, for the generation of the daily data. Uh, for And again, 10 years is the baseline. Anything beyond that is going to be dependent on the symbol. So you have access uh, to a large number of symbols, and in total, we're talking about 50,000 symbols based on the exchanges that are supported, the futures, uh, the forex, all those different types of symbols that Kinetic supports. We're talking about 50,000 different symbols uh, that you can access um, with this historical data because every single subscription to Kinetic includes historical data for all of these. Um, just one thing I like to highlight because I think it's a fun little fact uh, with the daily data is you can actually look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average back to 1928. Uh, so it's one of those things you can see the historical trend of it, the level, and like you can look at those those days in, in history where you know things maybe maybe didn't go according to plan. Uh, so it's uh, with the extensive amount of historical data, you really can use this for whatever it is you're looking to do with your trading uh, based on anything that's available with the basic service. And moving uh, on, we also offer a large amount of market metrics. And essentially what these market metrics are is they are supplementary. They're non-tradable symbols. Uh, a lot of people will use them as confirmation signal signals. Uh, there's over 500 included, things like the tick, the trend volume, uh, ratios, uh, put and call ratios, things like that. 
and they update in real time. Uh, a lot of providers will update these on a less frequent basis uh, as a way of preserving uh, network integrity. Uh, due to the technology that we run, uh, we don't have to do that, and so we update these uh, in real time. And what that does is it provides you quicker feedback in terms of your confirmation signals, things like that. And uh, just looking at this chart here, uh, what I wanted to show you is basically we have uh, a market metric here. And what this market metric is, is the uh, New York Stock Exchange net issues uh, as well uh, on a one second interval, uh, five, a 15 second interval, and then the uh, New York Stock Exchange composite index here. And the composite index is actually provided by the New York Stock Exchange. And you can see that they actually update theirs based on the individual uh, dashes here, that they update theirs on a 15-second uh, interval along with this 15 second interval here as well. Um, what we see based on that and the larger number of ticks that are generated with the market metrics that update every second is ultimately in between each of these updates from the exchange uh, we can get an idea of maybe where the market may be trending uh, based on these net issues and so the net issues is a ratio of the number of stocks that have um, advanced from their closed price the previous day. Um, since this is updating every single second, uh, it's actually going to be uh, the number of stocks that have advanced from their previous price uh, over the number of stocks that have declined. And so any downtrend would reflect a, a drop in that ratio ultimately uh, showing you a positive or negative number. And so you can see uh, over here on the right, we're looking at a number. And so the market itself was downtrending here. Uh, meanwhile, up here, we're looking at a market that is technically trending up, but ultimately it's trending down in the sense that the number of declining issues is actually increasing there as well, um, or the number of advancing issues is declining. Uh, since it is a ratio value, uh, it can be uh, a a variety of factors that ultimately affect that ratio. Uh, compared to the 15 seconds, we know we can see drops here, but we may not know what exactly is going on within that time frame. Uh, basically, just by looking at a more granular level, uh, we have an idea of what's going on in a more real-time basis. And that's the reason that we've updated these every single second in terms of the market metrics. Again, there's over 500 of these. Um, you know, I can't think of a day that goes by where uh, a trader doesn't send a, a, in an email to Kinetic and doesn't ask about a market metric that we do offer that I've never heard of. There's just so much going on, you know, and everyone has their own different trading styles. It's, it's always fascinating to me to figure out how different people are trading and to what extent they can ultimately use this data. Because it is so extensive, uh, there's a lot of flexibility ultimately in how it can be used. And we'll kind of cover those flexible aspects when we get over to the NinjaTrader application here shortly. But moving on, uh, I just wanted to highlight a few other features that are included with the basic service here. And one is news from different news sources. I don't know how many of you uh, will trade based off uh, news items. Maybe you're getting a, a report from uh, the Fed or something, uh, and things like that, uh, earnings reports, uh, things that ultimately can move the market. And with this news data, you can use the news window in NinjaTrader uh, to set up alerts and things like that. We'll talk about that. And uh, the ones that are included with the uh, Kinetic Basic Service would be the RTT News, the PR Newswire, and Business Wire. But there's also premium news services available. And we'll kind of highlight those once we start talking about the, the actual purchase uh, of Kinetic. Now, um, the last thing that we'll talk about here uh, as it relates to this is going to be uh, the affordability of Kinetic. Again, I, I do invite you to shop around, but uh, what you see with Kinetic is the um, best value free end of day data. So it's that 10 years of historical daily data that is available within the NinjaTrader application. And you can actually connect to that. And we'll highlight that uh, once we start working in NinjaTrader. That will be the first thing we do. And then the $304 with the market data fees waived is based on the four exchanges that are included with the CME waiver, which is uh, the CME, the CBOT, the NYMEX, and the COMEX exchanges. That actually covers a vast majority of Kinetic subscribers' uh, needs. Uh, for their live trading. It includes such common symbols like the ES, the MQ, uh, the YMs included there. It includes your grains, your currencies, uh, those futures contracts, your oils. 
uh, your natural gas, uh, things like that on the NYMEX, as well as gold and silver, which are on the COMEX exchange. So that umbrella of CME exchanges are all provided to you at no additional cost. Uh, the calculation by the exchange was by getting people to place trades on the exchange by offering them data, um, ultimately they, it would be able to uh, drive volume uh, on the exchange uh, there as well. And these real-time subscriptions and everything that we've discussed here are included with the basic service. Uh, you would get your historical and delay data, your your 500 plus market metrics, and then the news, uh, all at a, starting at uh, $50 per month. The real-time data, depending on the exchanges, uh, would be in addition to that uh, basic service. But we'll kind of go over that uh, in more detail of a little bit later. And right now I do have a question uh, going back to uh, previously what we were talking about, the market metrics. And they're asking, how many market metrics are there for oil? You know, um, that's something that I'm not entirely certain about, but um, one of the things we'll be doing here at the very end is working off of the Kinetic website. There is a function on the Kinetic website where you can search for symbols and you can specify the type of symbol that you're looking for. Um, what we can do once we get over there is uh, we can actually do a quick symbol search and just kind of see how many pull up. Now, not all of them may necessarily be what you're looking for, uh, but it'll give you a general idea of what kind of uh, data is going to be available. And so what I'm going to do is come back to that in terms of the market metrics, uh, show you some of the functionality that's available on the Kinetic website there as well. And uh, now the last thing uh, that we'll kind of touch upon here, and this kind of leads me into my next topic, is uh, Kinetic is a broker independent data feed, meaning there's no order execution capacity within it. And so it would actually be a supplementary feed to any brokerage data that you have uh, if you are trading live within NinjaTrader. Now NinjaTrader being free, you can use Kinetic as a uh, feed exclusively for simulation trading or back testing or, or whatever the function within NinjaTrader you wish to take advantage of, uh, the Kinetic Data can provide you that data uh, when you're using that NinjaTrader application. And uh, so let's say you're, f you're trading futures with a, a broker, but you're not, uh, but you want to view equities within that you maybe have in a, an IRA or something like that. And you can do that uh, with just the basic service subscription. Uh, we'll, I'll show you how that's configured within NinjaTrader. Uh, NinjaTrader has this functionality it's, uh, that enables you to connect to multiple different brokers at the same time. Um, and that's ultimately how you would use Kinetic as a supplement to your broker. Or depending on the connection order within NinjaTrader, and we'll cover both of these, you can actually uh, replace whatever broker's data you have, but still execute with the broker uh, within the NinjaTrader application. Now, uh, go ahead and pull out of here, and uh, let's go ahead and pull up the NinjaTrader application, minimize that, and we'll come back to that here in a moment. And right now, you guys should just see my background. I'll pull NinjaTrader into view here, and at this point in time, we should see the control panel uh, of the NinjaTrader uh, application. So, gone ahead and downloaded NinjaTrader. We're ready to go. We don't have data, but what we can do is access the Kinetic end of day data. If we go to file and then go to connect and then select Kinetic end of day feed here, uh, and this is preloaded. So as soon as you download NinjaTrader, you're actually going to have access to this particular feed. A lot of these are other connections that uh, I have available. But if you select the Kinetic end of day free feed, uh, it will be available to you just by downloading NinjaTrader. Uh, the result is, is I'm not getting real time data, but I do have this historical repository that I can now access when I'm using the NinjaTrader charting features. And when I want to view the, the charts within NinjaTrader, I'm going to go to File, I'm going to select New, and then I'm going to, from the available windows, I'm going to select chart. The result is that I get a data series window. The data series window is where I would define the symbol I want to view, and I can view any type of symbol here since we are connected to the end of day feed. What I can do is from a predefined list, I can grab uh, any of the symbols that I have listed there. And to get started, let's just go ahead and grab uh, the current ES contract. Now, once I do that, and I can add it to my chart just by double clicking, the other thing we can do is if you highlight and then select new, it adds it in the same way. Uh, right now, my charts are predefined to be 30 seconds. We need to make sure that we're viewing 
the type of historical data that's going to be available, and that's within your period options. What we'll do here within our period options of this data series is select from among the types of charts that are available. And so you can see the full extent of charts that are, are available within NinjaTrader. We have your tick, your volume, you have your range charts, and your second charts. Uh, Renki, uh, excuse me, combined Kagi and Renko there, but you have your Kagi, your Renko, point and figure, and your line break charts. All of those types of charts rely on that historical tick data uh, to be generated within NinjaTrader. Then you also have your minute and then your uh, longer time periods. So we can actually use any of the time chart uh, periods here, day, week, month, or year, uh, because we're connected to the end of day data. And uh, we'll just start with day. And once we do that, uh, we have the option of modifying the settings. Uh, these are just default settings, so there's not really anything you need to uh, modify here, but they are based uh, generally on your personal preferences there. And you can load templates that have preloaded indicators on them and things of that nature. Uh, that way, if you're setting up multiple charts, you can just quickly set up your charts based on the symbol and uh, the period type, stuff like that. A lot of flexibility in how you set up these charts. And then we'll go ahead and select OK. Uh, and let me bring this into view here. And the result is, is that the historical data is going to be displayed uh, on this particular uh, chart. We can scroll back in time uh, just using the scroll bar across the bottom. And we can kind of see uh, the trend of this. Uh, one of the things that we can do within our charts here based on this historical data is we can uh, adjust the, the scaling. Uh, in that manner, and there's a fixed scaling here now. If we left click that F, it gets back to the automatic scaling. Uh, the automatic scaling is essentially based on the visible lowest low and the visible highest high. So as we scroll back in time, you'll notice that the Y axis ends up getting readjusted based on uh, the lowest low and highest high that are available. But the other thing you can do is left click on the X axis, and by moving my mouse to the right, I can compress this. And you'll notice we kind of run out of data here, and that's actually a chart setting where if I right click, I can reopen the data series window by left clicking data series from this right click menu here and I can increase the days to load. If I want to view the full extent of the 10 years, I can change the how the data is loaded and change that to a custom range. Uh, let's say rather than just one year worth of data, I want to view 10. We'll go ahead and change that to 2003. Go ahead and left click OK. The result is, is that we load a, a larger amount of historical data uh, and the data that's ultimately all available from the kinetic servers. And that way we can kind of see, like, compared relatively, we're looking at here. And one of the things you can do is if you push down on your middle mouse button on a chart, it brings up this thing called a mini data box. And this just gives you a quick understanding of the values within a chart, the open, the high, low, close, and the volume. Uh, and here also you can see the date of April 9th, 2008. We can see the uh, the close price at thirteen thirteen twenty five. You compare it to now, and we're looking at a close price of sixteen sixty four fifty. Uh, and now the other thing that we can do is there is a limitation to the number of days of historical data that are available directly for this uh, in, for this particular front month uh, in terms of the ES oh six thirteen. Uh, by that I mean Kinetic also offers a continuous contract which is going to automatically merge the historical data from the previous front months. And this only applies to futures contracts. So essentially, uh, any time a rollover occurs, so we're coming up on one here uh, next month in terms of uh, the rollover from 0613 to 0913. Any time a rollover occurs like that and you begin trading a different front month uh, with a futures contract, uh, the continuous contract that Kinetic provides is ultimately going to provide you, uh, it's going to merge the historical data from one month into the next. Uh, that way you can provide a more, you can use more extensive data for your back testing. You can increase the number of uh, days in your chart uh, to view the full extent. Now just to give you an example here, if I were to scroll all the way back, you can see that it actually doesn't go back uh, to the 2003 that I defined. Uh, if I want to, I can then just quickly uh, and let me show you that again just to highlight it by left clicking on the chart to make it the active window and then I just start typing on my keyboard uh, it brings up a small data series window um, what we can call the mini data series and within the mini data series we just have the ability to quickly modify 
our chart symbol as well as our chart interval. So I can change this from daily to weekly or so on. Uh, so if I want to view, say, uh, the ES continuous contract, what I'm going to do is replace the specific front month value with placeholders uh, values that represent the continuous contract. Now this is a setting defined in IndiaTrader. and IndiaTrader defines this uh, uh, pound sign, pound sign, dash, pound sign, pound sign. So essentially uh, 0613 is the numbers are replaced with the pound sign. Uh, what that does is it tells uh, the kinetic servers that IndiaTrader is trying to load the continuous contract. And when I hit enter, what it does is uh, it doesn't really affect the display here. Um, there may be slight differences, and that's because there's a setting in IndiaTrader that will automatically merge my backjusted uh, when I merge the historical data based on, like, say, the 0613, the 0313. Um, when you're looking at that 0613 contract, it's actually pulling historical data uh, from the individual front months, and then IndiaTrader is in the background merging that that contract for you uh, and that merge is based on the date, dates defined as well as an offset value uh, for back adjustments. Uh, what the back adjustment does is it gives you a more continuous stream uh, and that way uh, differences in price levels from one level to the next uh, aren't, aren't um, readily apparent in terms of the, the different values among contracts. Now when we scroll back all the way uh, the result is that we are now viewing the full extent of the chart. Uh, whereas previously we only went back to 2004, uh, the 10 years worth of daily data is going to be included with this continuous contract symbol. And in fact, the ES being one of the more commonly, ones, commonly traded symbols, uh, we can right click here and open up the data series. And I believe we can push this back about uh, 15 years or so. So we should be able to go back to about 1998 with this. Um, and we can hit enter here. And uh, what we should see is the full range of the historical tick data. And you can see, actually, uh, that there's more available than uh, the 1998 data. So uh, you can see that minimum value of the 10 years worth of data. Now, this applies to other symbols here as well. If I want to view other futures contracts, I can just quickly type in those values, uh, say NQ here. And I can specify the front month, or I can use the continuous contract symbol here. And you can see that it loads. Uh, that way as well, but this applies to any of the symbols that are supported within the within uh, kinetic here. And so, in addition to futures, we can uh, type in a currency. We'll do uh, Euro USD here real quick, and uh, you can see the uh, the currency price uh, for the Euro, and we can see it going all the way back here uh, to 1999. So. Uh, January 1st, 1999 uh, would be the extent of the 10 years of the historical data that's available with this particular symbol. Um, again, that is more than the 10 years worth of data that, that's available for all uh, symbols here as well. And then also we can do stocks. Let's say we want to view uh, Apple. Uh, kind of curious to see how their stock today did today considering uh, testimony in Congress. but. Um, you can see that uh, it didn't seem to affect it. If anything, uh, we should be happy that they're doing that. But what you see is the amount of historical data going back again uh, is going to be dependent ultimately on the symbol. Uh, Apple being one of those more commonly traded ones is going to have uh, that full extent here. And there's no continuous contract or anything with equities here. And we can change this. Uh, we can do. Microsoft, uh, things like that. Uh, now, equities, there are going to be certain limitations depending on um, stocks that you're viewing. You know, obviously, you're not going to see stocks that extensively. So if I pull up Facebook, we only have like a year's worth of data. I think their IPO actually was technically one year yesterday. But uh, what we can see here is the historical data that's going to be available uh, depending on the particular symbol. And so whatever is available is, with Kinetic is going to be loaded within IndiaTrader. Now, that's how the ultimately the end of day data is going to work in the sense that ultimately it's going to be used primarily for your charting features. Uh, since it's not a streaming feed, it's just historical daily data. Um, the, the charting functionality of it 
uh, Ninja Trader is going to be your, your primary beneficiary uh, for this free end of day feed. The intraday data, though, uh, unlocks a larger amount of the Ninja Trader uh, functionality, including that news window as well as a level two window. Uh, the Superdome is another one where you can see updates in real time as well as bid and ask data uh, that's available, as well as market depth, things like that. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of particular data, and that's a when you connect to the intraday data that is uh, available within NinjaTrader. And so what we'll do now is we'll go to file, we'll go to disconnect and grab our kinetic end of day feed. We'll go to file, select connect here, and then we'll grab the kinetic connection. This is my intraday feed. Uh, hopefully now we have uh, some real time data being generated um, since and then uh, what we can see here is we have our Facebook uh, data. And we can actually, rather than viewing daily data now, we can change the interval to, say, let's go 30 minutes here. And uh, 30 minutes of data, and we'll go ahead and decompress this chart. It uh, gives you an idea, and you can see uh, exactly how many bars are generated on a specific trading day. And you can look at this. Uh, now, this applies to any other symbols as well. I can go uh, back through, and we'll go through Apple here, and you can see the, uh, the amount of data. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if we right-click on the chart and select Data Series, uh, each type of period has a specific date range depending on uh, the type of, so if we're viewing minute data, so to give an example here, if we, from the data series window, say change this to a tick chart, and we can load a 100 base tick chart, uh, it automatically loads three days worth of data uh, versus 365 that you get automatically predefined with daily data. Uh, we can increase this to, say, 15. Since we're outside of market trading hours, we'll actually have and the full extent of historical data, we can change that to 15. And then uh, you'll see here, uh, because of the optimization of Kinetic, it, uh, the loading of tick data can take a little bit of time, uh, but that's merely a function of the amount of data that is being transferred uh, within an individual bar here. If we middle mouse click here, uh, you can see the volume on a 100 tick chart of 16,000. So uh, each one of these bars is a large number of uh, trades uh, going on. The fact that we loaded that for 15 days, uh, you're ultimately talking about millions of data points that are being pulled over the network. And so uh, to some extent, that's also going to be based on uh, your internet connectivity there as well. Uh, but in addition to Apple, uh, other things like that, we can view say the ES contract, and we can view the 0613, got to make sure that we do it correctly, and then uh, hit enter here and we can switch the symbol uh, there as well. And this is going to load that full 15 days worth of tick data uh, that we were requesting uh, for the ES contract. And right now I don't have any in my database, otherwise it probably would have loaded quicker, uh, more quickly in terms of, uh, that was kind of goes back to that function in NinjaTrader I was talking about in terms of the caching of the data. Um, but what we'll see here is once this, uh, this chart finishes loading is the individual tick-based uh, bars that are being generated uh, with this. And we can actually compress this. And you can kind of get a sense uh, here of the scale of what we're talking about. Right now on this particular chart, I'm as compressed with this chart as I can be. And I am only able to show like four hours of data here uh, with these 100 base tick charts. Now, once we actually load this 100 uh, tick chart, I can actually quickly change to other types of charts uh, directly off the chart. And you can do that here within, say, uh, that data series as well. There's keyboard shortcuts for the different types of charts and the R being uh, a range chart. Once I do that, uh, you'll see that it loads much more quickly based on the fact that that data is already available. We can decompress this and you can kind of see the range bars. Now, uh, the range bars are, are a really cool feature in the sense that these aren't, these will actually um, maintain depending on where the price is. So as long as a price comes in within the four range that the current bar is established, that range bar is going to continue to be built. Uh, it's only when we get a, a tick outside of the current range of the current bar that a new range bar is generated. And a lot of traders actually rely on these, uh, these range charts uh, specifically for uh, what they represent. 
uh, where each bar ultimately can represent a different number of ticks. It's based purely on the price value uh, of the bar, whether a new bar is going to be generated there as well. But then we also have our minute data. We're talking 15 minutes worth of data, 60 minutes. And you can change here from your chart 60 minutes uh, there as well. And again, we can change our symbols just by typing them. Uh, as well. And now also we're talking about the market metrics because you can see how these update here. And the tick index is one of the really commonly traded ones. Uh, you'll notice I put that up carrot, the uh, shift and six key on your keyboard and that just tells NinjaTrader I'm viewing a market metric. And in this particular case uh, we're looking at the the tick value uh, of a 60 minute bar and what we see here is that last get that square. What we see here is that last bar uh, actually from where it opened to where it closed, uh, we saw a, a large uptick in terms of the number of stocks. Uh, what this is measuring is the number of stocks that are upticking versus the number of stocks that are downticking. It gives you a ratio, uh, much like that net issues that we compared with in the uh, previous uh, presentation there. Uh, the tick index is a ratio value there as well, but we also have our trend, our trend value here. And we can view that uh, quickly here as well. If you want to take a look at that same composite symbol, uh, we can look at that New York, uh, New York composite. And we can compare that with the daily data. Uh, this data would, would be available also with that end of day connection for free there. Now, um, in terms of the charting features, let's go ahead and kind of put that off to the side. Uh, there are a lot of other features that you have available to you within NinjaTrader. Uh, one I like to highlight specifically is the news window because of the news features that come with Kinetic. And to access the news window, we go to File, we go to New, and then we'll select News here. Uh, what that does is it brings up a window that just is essentially a stream of um, a stream of news articles um, that you're seeing here and it tells you the provider. Uh, you can see with mine a few of them are premium but PR Newswire here. Uh, you can take a look at the individual articles, uh, things like that. Now there's a lot of articles here and you can see the total as uh, shown in the, in the top left of 1006 and as a new article is generated 1008 uh, articles. That is a large amount of articles to sort through, uh, especially as it relates to my own trading. Uh, most of these things probably aren't going to be relevant for what I'm looking to do. And to that end, there's alerts and filters that you can apply to incoming news articles. Uh, if you right click in the top left of the news window and select add filter, uh, what you have the ability to do is just give it a name. You can give this an, any name you want. Um, I can call this D30 or something if I want to just do based on the 30 stocks that comprise the Dow Jones 30. And from there, um, I can define keywords. Let's say I'm interested in um, an FOMC report or something like that. That can be my keyword and anytime I get a, report, uh, a news article related to that, uh, I would be able to set an alert up for it, but any article that I already have this filter would uh, just drill it down to those specifically. So right now we'll go ahead and select Dow 30 and you can see all the stocks that are on the Dow 30 here and then we left click OK. Right now we haven't actually enabled this filter so from the bottom left we're going to go ahead and, excuse me, top left and we're going to go ahead and select our filter. And once we do that, what we have here is a couple of articles for the symbols there and we can see a uh, market at a glance update. You can see how that would uh, be based on our filter uh, that we have and then also here Intel uh, creates new devices groups, things like that. You, know, you can see if that's something that's relevant uh, for, your, for your trading there as well um, here. And then let's say neither of these articles that we filtered out is specifically what I'm looking for, but I do want to keep apprised of the news that is occurring, uh, we can set up an alert. So you think of a filter as a um, back test on news articles and then an alert as a, a way of uh, filtering out new articles. So I can right click and I can select add alert. Uh, we'll go ahead and create it the same as our filter and we'll go ahead and just give it the same name and use the same list. The only difference here between setting up a filter and an alert is that there's an additional tab here, alert, and then I can attach a sound file to it. And these are sounds that come preloaded in NinjaTrader and they'll open anytime you left click that ellipses button uh, where you have the sound file located. Left click OK there. 
And what we have is our alerts, and you can set these up uh, as many as you want and just select the ones that are uh, specific for you. Now what I can do is enable that alert. Uh, what that does is that enables me to, say, put that news window off to the side. Uh, I would hear that sound file that I associated with that particular uh, filter any time an article came in that actually met my, my conditions. So I don't need to be looking at the news window on a consistent basis if I have that alert in place because uh, within my headset, I would hear that sound file that would play and at that point I can pull up the news window, I can see if it's something that's going to be relevant and it is, uh, has a potential to affect my trading. Uh, if not, put the news window off to the side and wait for the next alert. Uh, that way it allows you to keep tabs on uh, things that may move your particular trades, uh, but you don't have to focus on it. And so. In that sense, uh, you can take advantage of these news feeds that do come with the basic service here as well. Uh, in addition to uh, the news window, uh, what we also offer is a, uh, a large amount of connection options based on how you would like to trade. And I uh, kind of want to finish up what we're doing here in NinjaTrader by highlighting this particular aspect. And this, is, uh, this pertains to the CME waiver program specifically. So now we had mentioned that to participate in the waiver program, you uh, would need to be live trading with NinjaTrader. And to that end, your broker would provide you with real-time data. And so there's a couple different ways that you can connect uh, to your broker and Kinetic. If I go to File and then Disconnect and then select Kinetic here, I'm going to go ahead and connect to uh, one of these brokerage connections that I have. Go to file. I'm going to select uh, CQG here. Uh, CQG being a um, brokerage provided connection. And what this connection would be is my broker would say provide me the credentials to connect uh, to CQG here. And when I'm in, when I'm connected to CQG, I'm getting whatever data uh, is available from them. And so right now, if I were to say load um, Apple stock you see uh, we have uh, cache data. And so actually, let's go ahead and load a symbol that we haven't uh, viewed before. That way you can see what data is being available, uh, being provided by CQG. So we'll go ahead and pull up 3M. And with 3M, you see that I don't have any historical data available. And that's because CQG is a futures provider. There's no data that is available from that uh, from CQG for stock data. Uh, this applies to uh, Forex as well, uh, as, as well as the market metrics here. Um, now I can access the futures data because that's what they provide, but anything beyond that uh, would not be accessible. But if I'm using uh, Kinetic as a secondary provider, which I can do simply by connecting to it, go to File, I connect, and then I select the Kinetic data feed, what you're going to see happen is once we connect, automatically that 3M chart loads. Uh, essentially, NinjaTrader is able to pull the data from the various sources regardless of the connection. So uh, since CQG doesn't support this, the same number of symbols that Kinetic does, NinjaTrader pulls from kinetic uh, what data it can uh, to load the charts that I'm wishing to view. And so anything that CQG is not supporting, it would ultimately be coming uh, from, uh, from kinetic in this scenario. And that way I can keep tabs on uh, multiple different markets. Even if my broker doesn't support those different markets, uh, that kinetic data feed is ultimately going to enable you to do this as well. You can access those market metrics here. Uh, a lot of people will subscribe just for those market metrics. They like to use the tick index, the trend, things like that, uh, again, for the confirmation signals that you have uh, that are available and uh, oftentimes what those market metrics will show. And then also you can track, like say, if you're holding in an IRA or anything like that. But you also have the ability here uh, within NinjaTrader of disabling historical data uh, for CQG and just using it for real-time data. You would get the, the real-time data and then historical data from Kinetic. Um, and that's just a matter of configuration based on how you connect here. Uh, the other option is the other option is to disconnect from CQG and then uh, reconnect here. So essentially, by disconnecting from CQG, we make Kinetic our primary provider. And then if I want to execute trades with my broker, I go to File, 
and then I go to connect and then I select CQG. CQG would be connected here within NinjaTrader exclusively to enable me to place trades with my broker. And uh, what that enables me to do is say I'm going to file, I go to, uh, let's do static Superdome here. Uh, I wish to place trades, I grab, say, the ES contract. What we'd see here is the price uh, data. Now, if I had a live license here with NinjaTrader, I would see my CQG account. Uh, if I wasn't connected to if I wasn't connected to CQG uh, and just Kinetic, even if I had a live license, I would only see that SIM 101 account. But uh, the CQG connection is my brokerage account, and from here I can place trades uh, directly to CQG, even though NinjaTrader is using Kinetic exclusively as the data provider. And so you can see in that first scenario where your broker is connected first and Kinetic second, it would be a supplement to whatever data your broker provides. But here you're able to replace whatever data your broker provides. Uh, uh, with the kinetic data. Now, some brokers uh, require you to have real-time data through them, uh, but not all brokers are the same in that sense. Uh, and so if you're with a broker that maybe doesn't offer data that is sufficient to your needs, uh, it may be possible for you to reduce costs by getting your data exclusively with NinjaTrader and connecting in this particular manner uh, here as well. And NinjaTrader provides you with that flexibility. And so while uh, you have this configuration, uh, you do have um, those options available to you. Uh, one thing I just want to highlight here as well is if I go to File, if I go to New, and then Level 2, uh, this is just an additional window. And uh, oftentimes, if I'm using the Level 2 window, uh, I will actually, rather than using the Static Superdome, I'll use the Dynamic Superdome. I go to File go to New and then Dynamic Superdome. Uh, the Dynamic Superdome then enables me to, in addition to futures contracts, also select uh, symbols that I wish to, let's say I grab the Ford stock here. Uh, the Dynamic Superdome though doesn't show the, uh, the full level two data that's available. And so to that end, we can use the level two window. Um, because market depth data is available at Kinetic, what I can do is I can link the windows here and uh, this L button by left clicking on it provides me with color options. By selecting the same color, I can link them. And I can also link that with a chart if I really want. So anytime I select a particular symbol, uh, whether it's within the within the uh, level two window, it also changes it within the chart and pull up my uh, Superdome here as well. And you can see I'm looking at the Intel stock uh, from my list. And I can add instruments to the list as I see fit within the instrument manager. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility with how this is all configured uh, there uh, within NinjaTrader. And so that kind of gives you an idea of how you can use Kinetic within the NinjaTrader application. Regardless of what you're using NinjaTrader for, uh, there is a benefit to using Kinetic, um, starting with the technology and then just based purely on the number of symbols that are supported. Now the thing I like to highlight and the benefit that comes with Kinetic is everything that you get here is available at an extremely affordable rate. And to that end, let's go ahead and bring back up uh, the, the internet here and uh, go over to the Kinetic site and when you are on the Kinetic site I wanted to get to this question about uh, market metrics for oil but um, when it comes to the Kinetic site, you have a lot of different functionalities. You can kind of go over these various aspects that covered pretty much everything we spoke about here today. Uh, but then there's also a support option. And the support option gives you the ability to, you can send an email to support or at kinetic.com uh, through the site. Uh, connection guide talks a little bit about what we were just talking about here. Uh, but then there's also a symbol search. And this is a way of just confirming whether uh, you are able to view uh, particular symbols that maybe are unique to your trading. So we can do a, a type in oil here and we can select, uh, rather than exchange, let's change the symbol to uh, market statistic. Market statistic being what's available. Uh, there and so right there you can see not a, nothing really pulled up but um, that's probably because we don't provide calculations based on them uh, the index values are going to be uh, your more uh, your more and these are provided directly from the exchange and you can see that they're in total here is about 558 uh, available indices. And there's thousands of these. Um, you know, different exchanges provide different indices. Uh, you have the CBOE here. I saw that. Say uh, you are looking at um, CBOE oil. 
and one tenth. And so you have a lot of these market, uh, these indices, and these indices actually come included as well with the basic service. Uh, and so the market metrics being calculated by Kinetic uh, are generally measures of the market. These oil uh, aspects are indices. Uh, and compared, um, it's a slight distinction, but one worth making uh, there in terms of the the symbols that are available with Kinetic. Um, here you can get an idea of the market statistics. You don't need to type anything; you can just do a quick search here, and you can see that in total, actually, we're looking about uh, 788 at this point, so oh, uh, well more than 500. And you can see uh, the kind of things. A lot of them apply to the various exchanges, and you can take a look at that. There's also a section on the there's also a section on uh, the kinetic site here where if you go to features it uh, outlines the the market statistics there as well. You can see some of the more commonly used ones or you can use that search functionality there as well. Now uh, getting back to the uh, purchase options though, uh, whenever you go to the purchase page you're confronted with two different options. Uh, that free end of day fee that we were demonstrating, if you select that option, what happens is it takes you to a page, kind of outlines some of the features that you get with it and uh, a method to download NinjaTrader. Since it's preloaded in the application, you would just go ahead and download, install NinjaTrader, and you're good to go. Uh, and then you can connect automatically, and you can access that daily historical data. Now I'm going to go ahead and select Ready to Purchase. And if we want to subscribe to the real-time data, uh, everything that we've talked about here is, is highlighted here, and we're going to go ahead and select Subscribe. What happens now is we get a, a page that details, essentially, the uh, various aspects that are going to be available to you. So we have our basic service. Um, nothing that we've talked about here is not included with the basic service. So everything is included with the basic service uh, here. And that's specified at the very top. And this is actually preloaded, uh, I should say pre-selected on the purchase page here. So if you're just looking for the basic service, you don't need to worry about any of these optional upgrades. And these optional upgrades are specifically for the real-time exchanges, things like that. Um, one of the things you can do is one of the, what you get is a hundred simultaneous symbols. It can be any symbol that you wish to view. It's just a hundred uh, different symbols at a given time. Uh, really, that is sufficient for most traders. Uh, sometimes you'll see that individuals need more simultaneous symbols based on whether they are uh, scanning. If you're using like the market analyzer in Ninja Trader, and you're scanning a large list of stocks uh, based on defined conditions, you may need to increase the number of symbols. We include that as an optional upgrade, uh, and the prices are defined there. You can increase to 200 or to 500 symbols. That way you can add like an entire list of 500 symbols. You can view the S&P 500 and scan that entire and that entire list provided you include that upgrade there. Um, then there's market depth data that you can include. Uh, that would be kind of what you saw within the uh, Superdome in the level two window. Uh, that's not automatically included for equities. Uh, that's actually a, an exchange uh, direct from the NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ OpenView being their level two data option. Uh, you have your premium news feeds. We're talking about that. Um, AP, fly on the wall. Uh, market Watch, Midnight Trader News. Now, uh, those are those are available to you if you are uh, heavily reliant on uh, news data. Uh, in most cases, the I, the news feeds that are included with the basic service uh, are sufficient. And again, those are defined here at the top as part of the basic service. And then you have your real time data that you can include here. You have your exchanges um, for uh, basic Forex. This was the difference I was talking a little bit about in terms of FXCM. FXCM is going to be your introductory uh, basic Forex here, and it's going to be exclusively um, from FXCM as a provider. Then you also have your uh, premium, and that's going to be uh, 10.4. It's going to include your FXCM data, but it adds 10.4. 10.4 provides composite symbols as well as uh, individual regional banks, uh, things like that. And uh, for some of the more uh, engaged Forex traders, that premium is, is ultimately what they settle on. Uh, and then you see the uh, exchanges that are supported. We have our uh, CBO futures, uh, our main domestic exchanges are defined on the top, and then our international exchanges below. So if you want to add uh, data for Brazil, you can do so for the BMNF. Uh, that's contracts like the... Um, 
the mini Bovespa um, that you can view, things like that. Uh, and then you also have your Eurex data, uh, which we would mentioned, and then all your LIF, uh, your LIF exchanges there as well. So you can select any of these exchanges for real-time data, which would be in addition to the uh, basic for, uh, basic service here, uh, with one exception. If I were to, say, select the CME exchange, uh, you'll notice what happened is I got an option to participate in the Group Globex Exchange Fee Waiver Program. Uh, by selecting this option, essentially what, it's, uh, what I'm telling uh, Kinetic during this process is I don't want to uh, add these exchanges at this cost. I want to add them at zero dollars because I will be participating in the waiver. Uh, and it details here, if we select the uh, that link, it details uh, the the exchange fee waiver program. Uh, in total, you're looking at about three hundred and four dollars uh, a month worth of exchange fees that you ultimately can waive. Uh, and so the way that balances out is this, each of the CME, the CBOT, the NYMEX, and the COMEX are each seventy six dollars per month. And there's also e mini options. Uh, those just include the CME e mini contracts, the ES, uh, NQ, and EMD being the primary ones there. CBOT e mini, uh, again, those are um, abbreviated contracts more than anything. Uh, there, this total per month isn't actually included in this total $304 per month because uh, the CME would. The CME e mini would be a component of the overall CME there, um, but then you hear you have some general information there, uh, and that waiver program's a great way to uh, start with Kinetic, uh, and also save the money of the exchange fees and trade live, uh, ultimately within Ninja Trader. And actually, any exchange that you select here. So if I select the CBOT exchange and say I want to participate in the waiver program. I have that option. Um, it also even applies to the CBOT E-mini here. Uh, the way that works ultimately is when I complete this by selecting this exchange waiver program uh, is I need to validate the waiver uh, so that I'm not billed for them. And steps for validating uh, are based in there. Um, within NinjaTrader, you actually have to create the connection. Um, didn't go through those steps. I already had the connection created. Uh, but you would when create when you complete the subscription process. Going back here, we can go through the process. Uh, professional status: certain exchanges make a distinction between whether you're a professional or not, uh, and this is just to guarantee uh, that you are a uh, non-professional trader. Essentially, uh, you'll be using using this for um, retail investing. Uh, things like that. Um, it's a little more gray than this, so if you have any questions about this, I would encourage you to send an email to uh, support at kinetic.com. And then you have your exchange agreements, and these are essentially uh, legal uh, documents that cover the, uh, the data uh, that's available. Um, I would encourage you to read all this, but it's, uh, it's, standard, it's standard boilerplate. In that sense, I would have to fill this all out and then hit next. Uh, the last page is just billing information and um, and uh, information related to the subscriber name, address, stuff like that. Uh, once you're done, you would get an email from Kinetic covering your connection information, and you would then be able to connect with NinjaTrader. So once you go through this process and kind of see how quickly it takes, uh, you would receive an email letting you know. Uh, here's your information. You would get billed for it um, based on the information provided. Uh, and the other, the other great thing, and I haven't mentioned this yet about Kinetic, is it is a month-to-month -month subscription. There's no long-term contract or anything like that. So if you sign up here, uh, you can actually cancel at any time, uh, and you would have only been billed for the time that the service was active. Uh, so there's no long-term commitment with Kinetic, and you can uh, conclude the service. Uh, if you want at any time. So it's a, it's a, that's a great advantage in terms of testing out the Kinetic, seeing if it's something that's going to work for you. Um, we understand also that you know, maybe, maybe it's uh, not something that's going to suit your trading uh, there as well. Uh, and so that's why we offer that free end of day feed. You can kind of test it out in that sense. Then also the month to month uh, cancel at any time option enables you to try out Kinetic on a short term basis and then keep it going um, as you see fit uh, within the NinjaTrader uh, uh, within the NinjaTrader application. So that's uh, that's the subscription process. It's the uh, final aspect of the Kinetic website that uh, we haven't covered here. Uh, talked about everything else uh, as it relates to the features of Kinetic.
and we'll go ahead and leave this page, go back to those features. But in terms of the kinetic data and what's available within NinjaTrader, uh, I hope I was able to uh, provide you a lot of information, give you an idea of uh, the benefits of the kinetic data here. Uh, but that actually covers everything I wanted to go over. Any questions you guys do have, I encourage you to either submit them through the support site again or uh, you can send them directly to support at kinetic.com. So I want to thank everyone for your time uh, here today. I want to thank Big Mike for the opportunity to present here as well. Um, I hope you all have a great day, and um, I will uh, talk with you soon, hopefully. Okay, thanks, Ryan. If anybody has questions, go ahead and type them right now, and otherwise uh, you can just email Ryan or go to the website. Uh, I do have one here from Gary. He's asking, CME phase waived program have an end date? Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, ultimately, I believe that would be at the discretion of the exchange. Um, considering the number of people who have been signing up uh, for the exchange waiver program and Kinetic generally, I would anticipate that being a, a program that's going to be available for the foreseeable future. It's been beneficial for everyone involved. And I'm based in the UK. Does Kinetic still make sense for me? Um, Ultimately, David, that's going to depend on the symbols that you trade. Um, our network infrastructure uh, doesn't really, you know, there is going to be some latency involved, just generally speaking, um, based on our centrally located servers in the U.S. to the U.K. Um, but, you know, we're talking fractions of a second here uh, and stuff like that. But it's ultimately going to depend on the symbols versus that that aspect of it um, in the sense that if you're, it depend, I mean, uh, if you have specific questions about those, uh, David, oh, okay, um, absolutely then, it makes sense for you, the, the foot, um, now actually David, one, one thing uh, I will ask you to clarify, when you say the FTSE and the DAX, are you speaking of the futures contracts or are you actually looking for the equities exchanges? Um, and then uh, also, is there replay for the metrics, does it have to be pre-recorded? Uh, not all symbols are pre-recorded uh, within the NinjaTrader replay. You would be able to record that yourself uh, within NinjaTrader and use it for replay data, um, but you wouldn't be able to download uh, replay data. Uh, but uh, absolutely, there's no reason that none of the, any of the symbols that Kinetic supports can't be used in replay as long as the replay feature is set up within NinjaTrader. Uh, the replay data won't work uh, with the end of day data. Uh, replay is ultimately going to be based on the generation of a streaming feed, which is going to be dependent on intraday data, which is going to update in real time uh, in that sense. And then, uh, David, thanks for the clarification there. The cash markets and probably the futures of those indices as well. Um, with the futures, uh, Kinetic can support those. The FTSE would be uh, available as the NY, uh, from the NYSE Lifts uh, Commodities Exchange. I'm sorry, the Indices Exchange. I believe there's numerous Lift exchanges uh, that are available. So that would be available there. Uh, the DAX is going to be available on the Eurex. You saw our Forex options, whether it's the um, basic or the premium. Um, so all of those are going to be available to you. The actual equity exchanges, though, uh, would not be available. So perhaps your broker uh, with it would enable you to view that data, and you can use Kinetic as a supplement to that since uh, those equity exchanges aren't going to be supported. Uh, equities with Kinetic are primarily for the U.S. and Canadian markets. Um, there hasn't been a, a huge amount of interest in terms of the uh, equities markets overseas, um, but we are always looking to add markets. So, uh, David, if you want to send me an email at uh, Kinetic, um, I can get in touch with our make market data services team, um, see if there are any plans going forward uh, to add those exchanges. Um, you know, largely depends on uh, the demand for them since the exchanges charge us a large amount uh, on a monthly basis just to provide this data to you. Uh, there as well. So um, those being the questions, it looks like I got everything. Uh, anything beyond that, <laughs> you know, I'd encourage you to get in touch with us. Thanks again, Mike. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Ryan. Thanks, guys. Bye.